Are we on? I want to welcome those who may be watching us online. I guess we're a couple of minutes late, but that's okay. Better to be late than never. Anyway, welcome to God's house and welcome to worship. If you look at the uh, front cover, uh, today is about Jesus in the, in the synagogue. You know, Jesus got in trouble a lot when he went to church. Did any of you get in trouble when you went to church? I did when I was, I was a preacher's kid, so I got in trouble a lot when I went to church. But anyway, Jesus did, and that's part of our text for today. Uh, turn to the inside of your worship folder. Uh, we're going to begin with the opening song, the pre-service song, He Has Made Me Glad. And we're going to sing through it twice, correct? correct? All right. Let us sing. Again, welcome to God's house, and our theme is Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath who comes to us. And you notice I have a, a prayer before worship. Maybe you've prayed it already, but let's join and pray it together. Would you join me, please? Almighty God, we come before your throne of grace this day as we set aside the Sabbath day to worship you and rest from our labors. We bow before you in humility as we confess our sins and receive your forgiveness and the body and blood of Jesus in the sacrament. We honor you as the God of heaven and earth. Speak to each of us this day through your word of the scriptures. Help us always remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy in our personal worship and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. We continue with the opening song, We Enthrone You, Would You Please Rise. <laughs> Our voices and proclaim 
take out your uh, blue hymn book in front of you and turn to page 158, and this morning we're going to use uh, Divine Service 2, okay? Which we haven't used in months. Page 158, Divine Service 2. We begin our time together this day in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Please take a moment of silence for private confession. We now confess our sins to God our Father. Together, please. Most, Most merciful, merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment but for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us. So that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. Almighty God, in his great mercy, gave his Son, Jesus, to die for you and to die for me. And for his sake, he forgives you and me all of our sins. So as a called and ordained servant of God's word, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us continue with the Kyrie and then on to the hymn of praise. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And let us pray. Dear Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, on this day, your day, the Lord's day, the Sabbath day. We, your children, gather together to worship and praise your holy name and to honor you as the God of our creation and the God of our salvation. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for this day and thank you for bringing us together that we may worship and praise you, but also that we may be a blessing to one another as we gather together. Dear Holy Spirit, talk to each of us this day. Change us, challenge us, guide us and correct us, and help us to live our lives as disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
In his name we pray. Amen. Please greet those around you this morning. As uh, Marlene and Miles are seated, we'll continue on. My fault. Take out your Bibles, folks. First Sunday in the month of June. There's five Sundays. Very unusual to have five in June. Turn to uh, page 282 in your Bible, and there you're going to find Deuteronomy chapter 5. Deuteronomy chapter 5, you betcha, page 282. And today we're going to read verses 12 through 15, because today is all about the Sabbath day. I think I asked this question, anybody get in trouble at church on the Sabbath day? Nobody wants to admit it? All right, so let's read together, all right? And I want you to identify the two reasons why the Lord remembering the Sabbath day is important. Everybody, you got it? Larry, you with me? Okay, together please, yes. Observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Join me. As the Lord your God has commanded you, six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your manservant or maidservant, nor your ox, your donkey, or any of your animals, nor the alien within your gates. 
so that your manservant and maidservant may rest as you do. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt and that the Lord your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God has commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. Okay, so what are the two reasons for the Sabbath? Rest, yes. Sabbath came out of creation, correct? As God rested, so you and I are to rest. By the way, remember when you worked three weeks straight without a day off? You were difficult to live with, right? Yeah. What's the second reason? Well, worship, that's not in here per se. That's not in here per se either. You and I are to, and the Israelites were to, remember. remember. Thank you. What were they to remember? That the Lord God brought them out of Egypt and slavery. Remember that? What's that a connection to? In our day, in the new covenant, the Lord our God has brought us out of the slavery of sin and death and evil. You may, do you see that connection? Who could put this together? Only God can do this. The Passover or the Sabbath day, I'm sorry, the Sabbath day was the day of rest but also and worship, but also the day to remember that God did what? Rescued his people. And today is our Sabbath day. And what do we remember? Our Lord has rescued you and me through the Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that crazy? Marvelous, marvelous. All right, let's go on to the New Testament. Go to Mark chapter 2, which you'll find on page 15, where is it? 1555, that's right. Now I'm lost, I got all excited. Yeah, you've got to see these connections of old and new covenant, and we just blow past them. It's marvelous. All right, so we're going to start with chapter 2, verse 23 in a moment. But before we do so, uh, in chapter 2, Jesus is in trouble all the time. He's in one conflict after another. And that's how Mark writes this. This is the purpose of chapter 2 and 3. He's in trouble with the teachers of the law and the Pharisees. Thank you, the Pharisees. Now, here's what he gets in trouble with. I'm starting earlier in chapter 2. He gets in trouble, first of all, because he forgives sins. He went to somebody and said, your sins are forgiven. Isn't it difficult to get in trouble to forgive sins? Now the next thing is, he's hanging out with sinners. That's the next group. Who are the sinners? Tax collectors. Thank you, John. Tax collectors. He's hanging out with sinners. Now we're not done yet. His disciples... And the next one is these disciples weren't keeping the fast like all the others. They were supposed to fast on certain days. And now comes our verses where Jesus gets in trouble for not observing the Sabbath laws of the Pharisees, okay? And this all leads to the last verse of our verses for today. Let's read, okay? We're starting at chapter 2, verse 23. Let's read. Join me. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as his disciples walked along, they began to pick some heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? He answered, have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need? In the days of Abiathar, the priest, he entered the house of God, ate the consecrated bread, which is lawful only for priests to eat. And he also gave some to his companions. 
Then he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Another time he went into the synagogue, and a man with a shriveled hand was there. Some of them were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus, so they watched him closely to see if he would heal him on the Sabbath. Jesus said to the man with a shriveled hand, Stand up in front of everyone. Then Jesus asked them, So which is lawful on the Sabbath? To do good or to do evil? To save life or to kill? But they remained silent. He looked around at them in anger and deeply distressed at their stubborn hearts. He said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and was completely restored. Then the Pharisees went out and began to plot with the Herodians how they might kill Jesus. Don't close your Bibles. Leave them open. We're going through it, all right? Ever since Israel returned from exile in the Babylonian captivity... That was 500 years before the time of Christ. Jewish society focused on two things. Anybody want to guess? That became the hallmark of their identity. The one was circumcision, and the other was the observance of the Sabbath day. Okay? So for the Jews, for those 500 years... The rabbis wrote volume after volume of rules and regulations describing what one could or could not do. They were huge. There were 39 categories of what you could or could not do on the Sabbath day. Can you imagine that? I invite you to go online and, and look that up. It was painfully minute, okay? They, they said how many steps you could take on the Sabbath day. I don't know if that's still true today, but you could take only so many steps to get where? To get to the synagogue. Yeah, that was it. And you couldn't, what's this? Oh, you couldn't carry anything in your hand because that was work. But guess what you could do? No, you could carry something on the back of your hand. Clever, wasn't it? So here it is. Now you got to live in this. This is the culture of Jesus' day. These hundreds, if not thousands, of rules and regulations of what you could and could not do on the Sabbath day. The religion of the Pharisees had become what? A religion of rules. Rules, okay? A matter of rules. So here we see, look at your verses. Let's go to uh, verse 25. Here we have the disciples. They're walking along with Jesus, and what are they doing on the Sabbath? They're plucking grain in the field, right? So they can eat. By the way, that was illegal. That was not permitted to do on the Sabbath day because what were you doing? You were working. <laughs> so you couldn't do that. So Jesus, look along here, Jesus reminds them of what David and his companions did. Now David and his companions on the Sabbath day, not only did they work, but what did they do? They what? Ah, oh, you missed it. Where did they go? into the temple and they took the bread i forget what the name of it was what was it the 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 show bread the show bread the show bread were 12 loaves of bread that were made and put on the table of gold in the temple in the holy part of the temple and who was that bread for it was for the priests and David and his men went in and ate 
that bread on the Sabbath day. You could probably, in their mind, and by the way, that was a thousand or so years before, but in the rules of Jesus' day, they probably would have been killed. You betcha. Okay? So that. Now, I want you to look at verse 27. That is key. He says, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath, okay? We'll come back to that in a moment. So the Sabbath, of course, comes out of creation, that when God rested on the seventh day, and he commanded his people to rest as well for their physical benefit, but also to honor him and to remember the great things God has done. God's law was meant to serve the people. And now in verse 27 comes a Christological statement. The Son of Man is what? Lord of the Sabbath. What does that mean? This Jesus of Nazareth, as true God, has the final authority to judge what is acceptable and what is not acceptable on the Sabbath days. And Jesus, in his ministry, pushes aside almost all, if not all, of these man-made rules. Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath. And we, because on the Sabbath day, what do we do? We worship him. He is Lord of our Sabbath day. So now let's go to chapter 3, okay? Are you with me? Stay with me. So another time, Jesus now goes to the what? And he always gets in trouble when he goes to the synagogue. Always does. So a man is there with the shriveled hands, and what are the Pharisees doing? Look at your text. They're watching him like a hawk. Thank you. They're watching him closely to see if he would what? Heal on the Sabbath. By the way, it was against Jewish rules. Not in the Bible, but against Jewish rules to heal. Unless a person had a life-threatening situation, you could not help them on the Sabbath day. You had to wait till the next day. All right? All right. So you got to look at this setting, all right? So Jesus, Jesus tells the man, look at the verses, he tells the man what? He says, stand up in front of everyone. Jesus has a plan. That's like him saying, okay, come on up here, and I want you to stand in, every, every, in front of everybody. What do you think Jesus has in mind? Teaching them a lesson, right? Showing what they are, all right? So Jesus has the man come up with the shriveled hand in front of everybody, and then what does he do? Then he puts the question to them. Which, what is lawful on the Sabbath, he says? To do good or to do evil? To save a life or to kill it? And what happens? They're silent because they don't want to answer, because they know they'll get into trouble, because in their world they've adopted the rules instead of compassion and helping people. Everybody understand that? They've adopted their rules of narrow confinement to having compassion on others. Now, I want you to look, because you and I don't see this too often. Look at verse 5. What does it say? What did Jesus do? you got to look at your Bibles. He looked at them. How do you think he looked at them? He looked at him like this, with squinty eyes. And he looked at him, okay? He looked at him in what? In anger. And 
deeply distressed at what? Their stubbornness. You know, we think Jesus was milk toast. I hate it when, when people make Jesus out to be of oh, this sort of weak, what's the word? This sort of weak, milk toast kind of guy. Never gets angry. He's always happy. That's baloney. Jesus gets angry. He's mad at those men, and he's mad at them, and he's distressed because they're so what? Stubborn and closed-minded to the ways of God. I wonder if Jesus would get angry today. Oh, I think he would. Look at all the people that are closed-minded to the ways of God in our world today. He's angry, and he looks at them, and he's distressed. Why don't you boys wake up and get a grip of the things of God? And he's getting madder by the moment. So what does he do? He what? He says to the man, stretch out your hand. And in front of everybody, his arm is completely healed. Can you imagine what the other people were thinking? Holy cow, is he in trouble now? Because he just did what? Something illegal on the Sabbath day. He healed this man. Remember, there were more than the than these idiots there. Now look at the last verse. How did the idiots respond? They what? They joined together and they began to what? Plot how to kill him. That was their plan. We got to get rid of him because he is a threat to our way of life and all the rules we have. Oh, wow. You got to let that sink in. Wouldn't you like to bend there as a little fly on the wall or a little kid watching Jesus <laughs> blow up? All right, part two. I'm sorry. What does this mean? That's a good Lutheran question, isn't it? What does this mean? Well, first of all, we must guard against making our faith and our religion a matter of rules. Let me say that. In the Christian church, we've got to guard against making our faith a bunch of rules that we make up so people will follow. You ever been in a church like that? I, I have. Let me give you an example. Let me ask you a question. Which candle on the candelabra does the acolyte light first and then last? That's a big issue in some churches. What hymns are appropriate to be sung in a Lutheran church, and what songs are not appropriate to be sung? You think I'm making fun. This is real for a lot of people. They won't sing a song that wasn't written by a German 400 years ago. I'm exaggerating now, but there's some truth to that. Now, let me tell you, and I want this, are those watching today, this is not, this is, I'm not talking about the Ten Commandments, okay? God's Ten Commandments, which we read part of, are still binding on us believers today. And let me say that plainly. We're living in a time with a group of people in the Christian church who have thrown out the Ten Commandments. They're passe. We don't have to follow them. We can do whatever we want. Whatever makes me 
happy. And we see that all over the place, okay? I'm not talking the Ten Commandments. And we're living in a culture, and we're living with parts of Christianity that have thrown them out. They, God's ways of right and wrong are still binding on us believers today. We are to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, and strength, and we are to love our neighbor as ourself. And God gives us the guidelines of what that means. Not some idiots out there in the world. Almighty God in his word gives us those guidelines, okay? We are to love the Lord our God, and that includes the observance of the Sabbath day. So Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath. What does that mean? Jesus is the focus and the object of our worship Sunday after Sunday. Can you imagine going to a church? And by the way, we've had some people say this, but I, I, it just blows my mind. Can you imagine going to church on Sunday morning and never hearing the name Jesus. How does that happen? In the kingdom of God, Jesus is the center and the focus of our worship. Okay? We, that's why we have the cross and the, and the resurrected Lord Jesus as the focus when we walk in. It is not something else, not some bizarre thing. Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath, which means he is the Lord and the focus of our day of worship because on this day, what do we remember? Not just what God did for the Israelites out of Egypt. We remember what God did on the cross and the empty tomb. And that is why in the New Covenant Church, the Sabbath day, Saturday, the believers turned it into Sunday, a weekly celebration of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the way, that conflict's been going on for years. The reason we worship on Sunday is because every Sunday is a celebration of his resurrection. Okay, And we need to understand that and remember that. Jesus is the center of our lives and our worship because he gave up his life on the cross to pay for your sins. And Jesus rose on that Sunday morning to give us the gift of eternal life. Without it, boys and girls, we got nothing. Last part of the sermon. I'm sorry I'm going on. So each week we focus on Jesus and his work of salvation. God comes to us in worship. We need, we need to understand that. That's always been Lutheran worship. You and I come to church, but guess who really is the unseen guest? Almighty God comes to you and me. And by the way, that's why it's important to be in God's house. Because in this place, where God's word and sacrament are used, God comes to us and the power of the Spirit comes into your life. And I got a list of what the Spirit does in church on Sunday morning. The Holy Spirit touches, first of all, touches your life. He corrects you and me. He corrects us in our thinking and our behavior. He moves us. He motivates us. He gives us a swift, swift kick where? In the pants, right? When we need to be moved, to, instead of being lazy believers, to serve the Lord. He cheers us when we're low. He gives us cheer, he cheers us and gives us hope. He humbles us. He encourages us. He challenges us. And he blesses us to be a blessing to others. And that's important here in worship. 
that you and I are a blessing to each other. By the way, the greeting of peace. Had someone in church recently, hadn't been here for a while, and that person was blessed because people came up and what? Gave that person a hug and said, good to see you. That's powerful stuff. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. That's what worship is. And I want to invite you to set aside time each Sunday, each Lord's Day, to remember and to worship and be a part of God's people together. It'll never be perfect, but here we spend time with our Father in heaven, the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. So last word is, when God speaks, his people must listen. So live with worship in your life, okay? Worship the Lord your God and rejoice in that. And have compassion on others as Jesus teaches in this text. Have compassion. And also, and I kind of over went over this, have compassion and work to change the hearts of people to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, where those who reject him keep working on them. By the way, we talked about that in Bible class today, how hard it is for to have family members who have nothing to do with Jesus. Don't give up on them. Pray for them and work on them and, may, and pray for God to work in them. Amen? In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to continue with the offering of our gifts. And then we're going to sing a song, the song for the day, the servant king. See you. 
his hands and his feet. The scars that speak of sacrifice and the stars of his to hit the high note on that, Larry, at the end. We're going to continue with uh, welcoming Scott and Vashtai into our congregation. So the two of you want to come on up, please? <coughs> Scott and Vashtai uh, moved here from North Carolina. You can stay right here. You can face me. <laughs> they stay, uh, they uh, moved here from North Carolina, I think it was four years ago, three years ago, about three. three. And have been with us ever since, and we're happy to have them. And thank you for the blessing that you are in our congregation. Okay, mm -hmm. she's from she's a native of North Carolina, <laughs> so she has wonderful Southern charm, right? <laughs> right, Scott. Yes. You better say yes, yeah. yes. Okay. And Scott was raised here in Southern California, weren't you? That's correct. Yes. And his mother was Lee Vieselman. Lee Vieselman. Remember Lee? who played the organ for us, Lee Mason, uh, for years, and she's been gone four years now. It will be. Close yeah, close to it. So, All right, well, let's have a prayer and welcome them. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for Scott and Vashtai and the blessings that they have been and continue to be in the life of this congregation. And dear Lord, as we receive them as members of this church, may they continue to serve you and love you and may they grow as your disciples here in this place. And may they continue to be a blessing to us so that we also may continue to bless them. Dear Lord, thank you for them. Be with their families and loved ones. Dear Lord, be with them in their work and all the things that fill their days. And may you, dear Lord, use them to be a blessing in the lives of many people. In your name, dear Jesus, we pray. Amen. So would you welcome them within our church? And, and, and we'll try and be nice to them, won't we? All right, all right, go ahead, have a seat. We're going to continue with the prayers for the day in the Lord's Prayer. I invite you to pull out your insert. Um, we want to add to the prayers of those who have lost loved ones, uh, Jeff Cohen, uh, your family, Jeff, over the death of your sister. So uh, we'll have time to pray for them. And I'm going to give you time to pray for yourself since we're on the Sabbath day. And I want you to pray for God to whatever you need in your life to touch you and to, uh, and to speak to you today. Please rise for the prayers. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for leading each of us to this house of worship today. To remember and to celebrate the Sabbath day and to remember and to celebrate the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today, dear Lord, we ask that you send your Holy Spirit into our lives personally to touch us and to speak to us individually. And now, dear Lord, we take time to pray privately. We pray, dear Holy Spirit, to you 
that you and bring before you those issues in our lives where we need you. We need you to change us, to motivate us, to guide us, and to equip us. So hear us as we take time for private prayer. Lord, in your mercy. Secondly, dear Lord, we pray for all those who grieve the loss of loved ones recently. And we add to our list the uh, Cohen family. Dear Father in heaven, bless these families and watch over them and grant them a sense of your peace and your joy in their lives. Dear Father in heaven, how good it is to have our lives in your hands so that no matter what comes, you're with us, you guide us, and you bless us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Dear Father in heaven, we also pray for all those who are dealing with health issues, those with physical ailments, those dealing with cancer, and those who are recovering from whatever issues they have. Dear Lord, be with them and bless them. And dear Holy Spirit, speak to them and to each of us in our lives that we may learn how to deal with the frustrations and the struggles and the challenges that life brings. Forgive us, dear Lord, when all we do is complain. Help us, dear Lord, to learn to put our lives into your hands like a little child, that we may come to you and trust that you're with us you will lead and you will guide. Into your hands, dear Heavenly Father, we commend all for whom we pray, as together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Our Lord Jesus, the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you. And the peace of our Lord be with you always. We continue with the sacrament. There are two songs to be sung. Please be seated. this body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen and empower you to love the Lord your God and pray for others.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, <clears throat> the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit bless you this day and fill you with his peace. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. A couple of announcements. Uh, let me find them first. Uh, baby bottle boomerang for the uh, Pregnancy Resource Center. Is that what they call it? Um, I still have some if you would like to uh, take one. Bring them back on two weeks from today on Father's Day, okay? And uh, Gene Anderson's memorial service is this coming Friday at 12 noon. And if you're going to attend, I need you to sign up on the sheet in the back um, for her family so they know how much food to order, okay? Anything else? Am I missing anything? We're going to sing with close this. We're going to close with this hymn, and I love this hymn. So, would you please stand? Go, my children, with my blessing, and not too slowly.
think that was fast enough? Have a good week, everybody. Jesus bless you. Scott and Vashtai, why don't you come with me so folks can greet you. Okay? Have a good week, everybody. Jesus bless you.